Praise the Lord and welcome to Sunday Morning Christian Education. My name is Tere DeLoach. I attend Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church located on 4781 Hamilton Avenue in Cincinnati, Ohio where Bishop James Chapman is the pastor and where there is a God in Bethlehem and Jesus is his name. Today's lesson is titled Rebuke and Repentance. The lesson text comes from the book of Judges chapter 10 verses 10 through 18. The golden text reads, The children of Israel said unto the Lord, We have sinned. Do thou unto us whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Deliver us only, we pray thee, this day. And that's from Judges chapter 10 verse 15. Google says, Rebuke means to express sharp disapproval or criticism of someone because of their behavior or actions. BibleStudyTools.com says rebuke means to reprimand, strongly warn, or restrain. Google says repentance is the act of repenting, which is sincere regret of remorse. The GospelCoalition.org says, Repentance involves a heartfelt conviction of sin, a contrition, contrition, I'm sorry, contrition over the offense to God, a turning away from the sinful way of life, and a turning towards a God-honoring way of life. Our lesson says, Suffering for making sinful choices should bring us back to God for help. The people of Israel have a long history of turning their backs on God. Time after time, they forsook the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because of their repeated faithlessness, in Judges 10 and 7 it says, And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines, and into the hands of the children of Ammon. 10 and 8 says, And that year they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel, Eighteen years, all the children of Israel that were on the other side of Jordan in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. When they cried out to him about it, he reminded them of the many times they had strayed, even after repeated deliverances. Judges 10 and 10 says, And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, saying, We have sinned against thee, both because we have forsake, forsaken our God, and also served Balaam. 10.11 says, And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Did not I deliver you from the Egyptians, and from the Amorites, and from the children of Ammon, and from the Philistines. 10 and 12 says, The Zidonians also, and the Amagalites, and the Mammonites did oppress you, and ye cried to me, and I deliver you out of their hand. 10 13 says, Yet ye have forsaken me, and served other gods. Wherefore, I will deliver you no more. 10.14 says, Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. Uh oh. It looks like it's getting real serious now. He's done. 10.15 says, And the children of Israel said unto the Lord, We have sinned. Do thou unto us whatsoever seemeth good 
unto thee. Deliver us only, we pray thee, this day. 1016 says, And they put away the strange gods from among them, and served the Lord. And his soul was grieved from the misery of Israel. Oh, now you want to be responsible and obey. I guess he finally got their attention. This time, the Israelites took heed. They repented and acknowledged their need of God. They had a genuine change of heart. God is long-suffering and forgiving. He will restore all who repent and trust in Him. No sin should ever keep us away from our Heavenly Father. When everything is going fine, we may get the idea that we can make it on our own and we don't need God anymore. And we don't need to live by His rules and His standards of behavior. However, when our world begins to crumble, crumble and all kind of trouble come around you, we suddenly realize how powerless we are without Him and how much we do need God. In a crisis, we are willing to make any kind of deal as long as God will come to help us. Obedience seems like such a small price to pay for deliverance. I tell you what, there isn't a time that I don't need God. I need Him every second, every minute, and every hour. I need Him all the time, whether I'm doing good or bad. Or whether I'm feeling happy or sad, I still need Him. Certainly God helps us out of our messes that we always get into from ourselves. But his greatest act of deliverance is salvation. When Christ saves us, he delivers us from both sin and death. Our world is no longer simply turning or walking away from God. It is racing. They are racing away from him. What used to be wrong is now considered right. What is up is now down. Right is now left. But our God has never changed. And has not changed. And he will not change. His ways are perfect. His ways are higher than our ways. As our world grows darker and darker, the need for the light grows greater and greater. Jesus is that light for the world. I hope I have said something. I hope I have put something on your mind. Until next time, God bless.